It's the Yoba series. Yoba, what's up and what's happening? And welcome back to It's the Yoba series with me, Chris Hardin. I'd also like to welcome you back to the third installment of the diabetic series that I'm doing with Adaption Nutrition. So guys, let's dive straight into it. The question that I'm going to ask today in the third installment of the diabetic series is what is the actual truth behind your diabetes? So guys, in the last episode in section two, we looked at different things that affect diabetes nowadays, but that doesn't actually necessarily describe the entire picture behind why we actually have diabetes as a metabolic disease in the 21st century. What we want to look at or what we want to take note of is the fact that we need to look at diabetes and other metabolic diseases from an anthropological point of view, an anthropological perspective, if you like. So what do I mean by that? Well, when we look at the previous episode, which I'll put up here, what we looked at in the previous episode is we looked at our lifestyle, our stress, our sleep pattern, how we take our fitness and exercise into account, and also how the medical industry or medicine in general deals with diabetes. Now those things are obviously really important to be able to note because they are relative to us today, how you're gonna go forward with something such as diabetes. So when we look at things from an anthropological perspective or let's just say we look at humans in general, we wanna go back to a beginning, a starting point, or at least a beginning or a frontier if you like. And when we look back roughly 10,000 years ago, uh, it's quite obvious to see that humans started to be to use agriculture. So we started to farm land rather than going from uh, sort of you know hunter gatherers um, or picking berries or different things of that nature. Before we discovered agriculture, uh, we were very much living by the land. Whereas we discovered through agriculture that the land could kind of start to provide for us more and that's where agriculture basically came from is the ability to be able to use things such as wheats and grains and be able to farm them uh, on a on a mass level so the reason why i'm bringing this up is because our genes wouldn't have really differed much from now all the way back through to 10 even 15,000 years ago our genes would have pretty much been the same but our health Um, and metabolic diseases such as diabetes has become um, a major issue for us. So again, we're looking back into agriculture, well, we're looking back before agriculture as to what we would have done then and why things have possibly changed so much um, for us now. So when we're comparing our modern day habits to our sort of prehistoric habits, Let's go back a little bit further than 10,000 years and let's look at a prehistoric person, a prehistoric human. They probably would have been foraging. They would have been hunter-gatherers and to some point they would have been scavengers as well. They would have scavenged for food. Because of that, they would have been two things in particular. The first thing would have been that they would have had a lot less access to calories. If you look at today, we have a almost abundant access to calories to food to intake you know it's probably only in the last 70 to 80 years that food has become much more vastly available for us now if you go back to a prehistoric hunter-gatherer the calorie intake just alone on its by itself would be far far less basically there would have been far less food to be able to consume per day per week per month and therefore the overall amount of food that obviously would have been natural none of it would have been processed and to some degree our food would have started to become processed when agriculture began because when we started to harvest wheat and and things like that um, we would have processed it into other things such as cereals and breads and things of that nature so our processing of food did start but before that time we wouldn't have eaten hardly anything that was processed. I guess one process you could call is possibly heating um, some things, which possibly would have happened, such as um, heating things like meat and things like that to to be able to cook meat so it was more easily digestible for us. However, I slightly digress. What I mean to say is that we would have obviously had 
less calorie intake. That's the first thing. The second thing is, is that we would have had to have hunted for our food. That would have been one of our main purposes in life. One of our main purposes in life at that time, and like I say, our genes haven't changed at all within 10 to 15,000 years. One of our main purposes at that time would have been to hunt for the food. So by hunting for the food, you're spending a part of your day or a part of your week gathering and hunting for those those calories for that energy therefore there's an energy expenditure to be able to require energy and that would have been another thing that would have kept us a lot leaner a lot slimmer i'm not saying that we're necessarily walking around like zach efron <laughs> um but we would have been possibly smaller in height in stature because we wouldn't have been as um nourished as we are today that could be a possibility but we wouldn't have been necessarily as overweight. The third thing is, is that would have been highly unlikely that we'd have lived much past 40 to 45. So to die at 40 or 45 in today's day and age is, is, is quite rare. Um, and normally when we die um, at a young age in, in modern day society, um, it can be due to disease, it can be due to a, a fatal accident or something of that nature. But then it would have been a lot more likely okay to, to have died at a younger age so therefore the ability to be able to develop disease just wouldn't have happened there was something really interesting that i read the other day that we actually don't live longer we actually have managed to through medication um outlive diseases um which i thought was a really interesting uh quote that we don't actually necessarily live longer we have just been able to outlive diseases and cure many diseases and therefore we are able to live longer because of that so if we look back at the previous video in in uh, the, the second part of the series for for the diabetes we looked at a couple of things and one of the things we looked at was stress well they would have had stress their stress would have been the same because stress is basically a reaction um a chemical hormone such as cortisol would have happened their stress levels may have differed in different ways they would have had different forms of stress yes we certainly have stress in today's 21st century i think that their stress would have been a lot less and i think that their stress would have been a lot less psychological as well i think that in modern day we have a lot of mental health and a lot of psychological stress that we have to cope with that we have to deal with and i think that's because of the uh, age of the internet you know i think the internet has made everything so much faster the world wide web everything so much more accessible and that very much um speaks to us in terms of what we feel we need or we feel we need to have value that probably wouldn't have been such a a big deal in that in that society because those societies would have been small groups of people small bands of people and so possibly there would have been a human want a human need of course there would have been but it wouldn't have been the same as what it is today therefore if you look at other things such as sleep which is what we spoke about in the second uh, episode their sleep would have been a lot more natural they wouldn't have woken up by an alarm they would have woken up possibly with the sun they would have slept during the day they would have slept longer periods at night because they had no artificial light um there was also another thing such as simple as just having things like caffeine caffeine wouldn't have been around then they wouldn't have been able to have coffee you know coffee wasn't sort of brought in until the 14 15 1600s and obviously caffeine changed a lot of things for us we were able to stay awake longer um naturally by boiling it um, and drinking uh, things such as coffee um, but obviously they wouldn't have had that back then either so their likelihood of them resting more would have been a lot higher therefore their anxiety and stresses and things would have been a lot lower so those two things sleep and stress would have been much easier to at least cure and I think that again in today's society we don't have those things sort of under wraps so because we don't have those things we often turn to or oh, what's wrong what's wrong with me what's wrong with my what's wrong with my lifestyle do i need to have a pill is there something that i can take to improve it and quite often it's like no there isn't anything that you need to take it's what you need to do you need to have a look at yourself and say are these very simple basic rules am i sort of following them is do i have enough exercise or at least do i have enough movement is my food coming from processed foods or is it coming from sort of more natural sources uh, am I getting enough sleep? Am I getting enough rest? Am I having enough downtime? Am I highly stressed? 
you know, am I looking at too much social media? All of those things are going to go towards uh, the overall picture when we're looking at a metabolic disease such as diabetes. So basically what I'm trying to say from that is, is that we pretty much have to adhere to society's rhythms. We don't really adhere to nature's rhythms anymore. And I think that that has um, an overwhelming effect on our bodies. I think that yes, we can live a much longer time. And again, like I say, it's been proven that we can outlive diseases because we have cures for those diseases by the medication that we are able to take. But that doesn't necessarily answer the fact that for the next generation for your children and for you that um, living the way that you are living now is necessarily the right way I think that I'm not saying we're going to go back 10,000 years to how we were in nature it would be impossible we, we, we wouldn't survive um, but I do think that we need to take some things into account here that we're sort of saying okay where the hell am I getting my food from um, what what process has this food been through the, the food that i'm holding in my hand right now or the food that i'm looking at in my plate on, on my plate from the restaurant that i've been to each individual item how many foods has been processed to be able for it to be able to get to my plate um and i think yeah that's that's quite an important question that you should be asking yourself whether you've got diabetes or not but especially if you've got diabetes and especially if you're eating something which is technically a refined carbohydrate because it is going to affect your disease so when you're looking at things from an anthropological perspective that then argues the question well what do we do now with our diets our diets tend to be always these sort of you know extreme uh, versions of the low carb diet the high fat diet the atkins diet the you know whatever cambridge diet um, the new Weight Watch diet or the new fad diet that you see in the magazine, the diet that's going to lose you pounds and pounds in just a week. It's completely unhealthy, completely unnatural, and it's not going to last anyway. Um, and I think that that's where those things have come from because no one knows the answer. I was speaking to someone the other day, a client of mine, and I kind of asked her, why don't you understand, you know, what's best for you because I was amazed uh, to read um, on a Facebook comment I am part of a Facebook group and I was am amazed to read some of the comments on there where people just don't get a, they just don't have a good understanding of just general nutrition and she said that it's because there's so much information out there available but it's all very confusing and it's all to the extremes like you've got let's say intermittent fasting intermittent fasting will work for quite a lot of people because it suits their lifestyle okay so rather than just talking about the fact whether they have lost weight or not or whether it's helped them reverse their diabetes or whether they you know can keep up with it it suits them people who try intermittent fasting and it doesn't suit them for whatever reason is because it doesn't suit their lifestyle and perhaps it doesn't even suit the types of food or the culture of where they come from um and so what we've got to kind of understand is is that yes to some degree some different diets are going to work for some people and other diets just aren't going to work at all and i'll give you this advice if you see anything with a diet that says that it's going to lose pounds in days or weeks stay away from it there is no way that your body is physically able to lose a lot of weight in a very short amount of time again I don't mean to moan here, but if you are someone who is obese, if you are someone who's overweight, if you do have type 2 diabetes or pre-diabetes, or you're someone who's carrying a few extra pounds, how long did it take you to get there? How long did it take you to be able to put all that weight on? There is no way that you're going to be able to lose pounds and pounds and pounds of fat just because you decided to change or just because you decided that you want to make a change it's just not going to happen that way so the healthiest thing to do is to do as much research as you can look at your lifestyle and the other thing you should really do is start to write down the foods that you have day in day out even if it's a bad diet even if it's a diet that you'd be ashamed to show anybody write it down for at least three to four days and then review it and go over it and think oh okay actually i did have wow i had three bags of 
crisps or potato chips if you have that in America or I had free chocolate bars or yeah I had god I had five drinks that night um like alcoholic drinks those things are all going to make a difference but those those things can all easily be changed you can change things and swap things in and out you don't necessarily have to have less or more you could just say that rather than having three bags of crisps I'm going to have 50 grams of you know assorted mixed nuts which are salted okay and okay they've got fat they've got you know some protein in them but they're better than having just potato chips or crisps because uh they are just a refined carbohydrate but it's only going to help uh you know up the weight up the chances of your diabetes so what is the actual truth about your diabetes well the actual truth about diabetes is the fact that diabetes is an epidemic it's a worldwide problem and the thing that you need to understand is is that your genes your genetic makeup hasn't changed for thousands and thousands of years but your lifestyle has changed quite dramatically in the last 70 80 70 to 80 years the way in which we consume food has changed greatly and because of the agricultural revolution that happened roughly 10,000 years ago that's kind of happened such a long time ago but it's actually now ingrained within us so what we need to try and do is we need to try and think about the food or the type of foods that we're eating which align with how we would have ate before um, the agricultural revolution and also how our genes would have preferred to have eaten at that time. Um, in, a, in a book uh, called Sapiens, the author basically states that the agricultural revolution was the worst thing to have ever have happened to us because it has led to... Uh, the 21st society today whether i agree with that or not doesn't really matter but what i am trying to tell you is is that if you align uh more to eating natural foods um it will absolutely help or begin to help the reversal of your diabetes guys thank you so much for watching this video i do hope that it does help you and i also appreciate your time watching it like subscribe to the video and also comment below it also helps the YT algorithm and it also helps this channel. Be fit, be healthy, crush diabetes, and of course, be a boss bar. It's the Yo Bossy Wish.